All right. Our next speaker is uh, Joshua Fu, uh, the University of Queensland, and uh, he's going to talk about measurement-based Lorentz covariant Bohmian trajectories of multiple photons. So, Joshua, whenever you want, the floor is yours. Cool. Thank you, Eduardo, and uh, all the team of PhD students who helped organize the conference. Uh, yes, as Eduardo mentioned, uh, my talk is a bit of a mouthful, but I digress. Uh, this was done in collaboration with Austin, who's a postdoc at UQ, and Tim Ralph, who's my uh, PhD supervisor, along with Magdalena. Uh, I thought I had 15 minutes, so I'm going to have to speed through this. Um, so as a summary of my talk, I will um, just... There. So I'll uh, first introduce uh, a paper that we recently published, which uh, discusses the relativistic Bohmian trajectories of single photons via weak measurements. I'll then uh, talk about the topic of this talk, which is an extension of our model to multiparticle interactions, and then I'll conclude with some summary statements. Um, so... Uh, so yeah, uh, Bohmian mechanics, as you may be aware, is a uh, deterministic non-local hidden variable interpretation of quantum mechanics, uh, otherwise known as pilot wave theory. Uh, according to most surveys, zero to 2% of physicists prefer this interpretation, uh, which makes uh, roughly zero to 1.2 people in this uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, so now we have uh, the wave function uh, interpreted as sourcing some guiding potential, which governs the particle dynamics. And from that, we can obtain some deterministic classical velocity field, which uh, the particles follow. Uh, and as with any good interpretation of quantum theory, uh, it agrees uh, with a lot of the standard predictions of quantum mechanics. So, for example, the uh, density is uh, probability density is now interpreted as a density of particle trajectories given some initial conditions. Uh, so interest in Bohmian mechanics was revived in 2007 when Howard Wiseman drew a connection between weak values and the Bohmian velocity field of non-relativistic particles. So uh, he basically constructed a, uh, uh, a velocity field uh, given some guiding wave psi for these classical uh, quantum particles, these classical particles uh, guided by this quantum wave function psi uh, through this formula uh, where the nomenclature here uh, uh, denotes a weak value of the particle uh, particle's momentum. Uh, so if you're not familiar with a weak, what a weak value is, uh, we have to go back to what a weak measurement is, which is a measurement that only uh, weakly perturbs a quantum system, uh, but comes with a lot of measurement uncertainty. So uh, a repeated uh, number of weak measurements on an ensemble will allow uh, you to extract the average value of the um, the the observable uh, with arbitrarily high accuracy, and a weak value extend this, extends this by introducing post-selection on particular results that uh, find the system into in, to be in some final state, which we've chosen to be the position eigenstate x. So what this says is that uh, we uh, calculate the uh, we measure weakly the momentum of these particles and post-select only those results where the particle is found at the position x. So what Howard did was he connected this weak value formula with uh, this um, uh, the Bohmian looking uh, quantity where we construct our velocity from uh, the conserved current and the conserved current density in the uh, uh, non-relativistic uh, Schrodinger equation. Um, and the significance of this, uh, of this result was that uh, basically these uh, Bohmian type velocity fields uh, were grounded in some measurement framework, which is sort of unique to uh, this uh, Bohmian interpretation. So uh, some experiments perf were performed where uh, this group in Toronto, led by Ephraim Steinberg, were able to track the non-relativistic uh, trajectories of photons through a double slit interferometer. And as you can see, the um, particles bunch up in regions of constructive interference, and they seem to avoid regions of destructive interference, as you can see here. Um, and so what we did in this paper was uh, extend this to relativistic regimes. So we take the uh, relativistic definition of velocity uh, as constructed from components of the conserve uh, um, for uh, momentum and energy. Um, and we conjecture that we can construct a weak value type velocity equation using weak values of momentum divided by the weak value of the energy of the particle. And we show, assuming some particular dynamical theory, which we took to be this uh, scalar Klein-Gordon theory, that there is a uh, correspondence between the weak value formula and that which we uh, would associate with a Bohmian type interpretation, where we have the current divided by the probability density. Now you can assume any particular dynamical theory, you could take the Dirac or the spin one uh, Klein-Gordon theory as well. 
So we can plot uh, particle trajectories. Um, and so here, each white line corresponds to a single initial condition of a particle um, in a uh, Mac Mickelson Sanyak type interferometer, we have a superposition of left and right moving waves in the standard interpretation, uh, where you have a coherently evolving wave function through both arms of the interferometer. But here we've got classical particles which are guided by this wave function, and they, uh, they exhibit some in interesting interference effects where the density of particle trajectories bunches up in regions of constructive interference. Uh, we can uh, perform a boost uh, on the trajectories and the velocity fields, and we find that um, we can relate the trajectories in two different reference frames by the standard Lorentz transformation. Um, I should mention that we uh, use, uh, we assume a particular physical limit where the wave vectors are uh, centered far away from the origin so that we don't have any negative Gaussian tails going into negative frequencies, which are typically associated with um, subcycle particle production effects, which would need a uh, model that incorporates particle production and so on. So extension to multi-particle interactions, uh, the way that we want to construe this question is uh, we pushed uh, Bohmian mechanics from non-relativistic regimes to uh, relativistic regimes. And now we want to ask, can we uh, include a consistent description that incorporates multiple interacting photons? Uh, and we can write down this problem as follows. Uh, can we derive some velocity field and trajectories using a weak value type formula and uh, show that this is equivalent to a uh, manifestly Lorentz covariant uh, uh, theory that uh, is constructed from your usual relativistic components of um, a particular relativistic theory like the Klein-Gordon equation. So this is an equation-heavy uh, text uh, box, but uh, basically we want to show essentially the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So uh, the operational approach is basically what we would tell an experimentalist to do. So we set up our system with a, uh, a right-moving wave packet of momenta and a left-moving wave packet of momenta. So we just have two photons uh, in some particular wave packet colliding with each other. Uh, and to study some non-trivial interaction between them, we want to encode some agnosticism within the detection. So, um, and so what, how we do this is uh, by choosing two detectors, uh, which cannot tell the identity of the particles and which way they're coming from, and they can only detect a single click. Uh, and so what this, uh, post-selection is now um, conditioned on is, uh, is this state. So we can have detector A uh, detecting a, the photon in the uh, right moving mode at position X1 and detector B uh, detecting a photon in the left moving mode at position X2 and vice versa. Uh, detector A detecting a uh, left moving mode at position X1 and detector B detecting a right moving mode at position X2. Uh, we Our observables of interest are now associated with the detectors themselves. So we uh, want to uh, obtain the weak value that the detector uh, measures and same as the uh, momentum of the detector as well. We then uh, construct our weak value velocities in the usual way uh, and we can compute trajectories in, in, in that fashion. Uh, from the formal approach, which may be a bit more conceptually uh, straightforward to understand if anyone's done first year quantum mechanics, uh, we've got our relativistic wave functions, uh, a right moving one and a left moving one. And because the particles are bosons, we can symmetrize them in position and time. And we obtain this symmetrized wave function, which is uh, what everyone has probably seen. Uh, and we construct these Bohmian type velocity fields using our klein cordon conserved current and density. And we evaluate them on a particular time slice. Uh, so this is a particular choice. Uh, it's not anything that breaks uh, relativistic constraints or anything. If we want to boost into another frame, then obviously these times would become uh, non-simultaneous but we do this uh, to sort of uh, match up in accordance with our operational approach, uh, the way that detectors would sort of operate on a single time and then move forward in time and perform these weak values and then move forward in time and, and so, they, so that they can keep track of the particles and where they go uh, so that they can interpolate their trajectories. Uh, long story short, uh, the left-hand side does equal the right-hand side. Uh, which means that we have sort of been able to ground uh, this uh, somewhat uh, debated uh, theory of uh, relativistic Bohmian mechanics with multiple particles now in a measurement formalism that should in principle allow some experimentalists to go and do this in the lab. Uh, so these are some of the trajectories that we obtain. Um, each, each color corresponds to a pair of photons. Uh, I guess that's five minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Uh, each color corresponds to a pair of photons. Uh, and as you can see, they exhibit interference. Uh, here we've started all of them on a single initial trajectory, and we've changed the other initial trajectories of the other photon. And here we've uh, started them on symmetric uh, initial conditions. 
we can show that they uh, satisfy a quantum mechanical continuity. So uh, here we've got uh, time slices of the, uh, of the trajectories at a single time, and we've plotted them on the parameter space of the positions of the both particles. Uh, the fact that there are two blobs here shows that, uh, yeah, the, the particles are indistinguishable. So particle one could show up at one and particle two, two could show up at negative one and vice versa. Uh, and as you see, each uh, dot, which corresponds to a pair of trajectories, matches up with the quantum mechanical density underlaid. Uh, we can boost and uh, get similar trajectories as, uh, as we showed before. Uh, we can show that the operational and the formal approaches uh, match up exactly. Uh, and we can show that uh, continuity holds in this case as well. Uh, so just to summarize my 12 minute talk, uh, our weak value formalism for single photons can be extended to multi-particle interactions. Uh, we've done this by grounding two photon Bohmian trajectories in the notion of weak values of momentum and energy. Uh, we studied uh, the velocities and trajectories for a two photon interference due to their indistinguishability. And this gives us hope that our approach can extend to entangling interactions, trajectories in curved space, gravitational potentials and um, particle production and annihilation processes. Uh, so thank you for your attentiveness, I hope. Um, and feel free to email me for any questions or suggestions or collaboration. Um, yeah, and this is a photo I made uh, for our center workshop uh, annual report. Thank you. Very nice talk. We can have time for one question. Please use the raise hand feature. Rob, yep, go ahead, please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, very interesting and speedy talk. Uh, what I'm a bit confused about, you said experimentalists could go into the lab and test. What will, are you saying that this work gives a clear distinction between a Bohmian prediction and a standard quantum prediction? Because I thought Bohmian mechanics was supposed to be Hmm. like deterministic quantum so is is there an empirical distinction between the two uh what i i didn't mean to say that it predicts something different to standard quantum mechanics i'm I, what i was trying to say was that a, given our weak value prescription uh an experimenters could follow the recipe of uh setting up the detectors and setting up their lasers and uh tracking through particular times and performing the weak measurements and so on and if they followed our recipe they could uh verify that the trajectories that these photons uh follow in this uh photon bunching type um effect that they would get similar they would get the the trajectories that we obtain here obviously in a, a standard quantum uh, mechanics uh experiment you would just get the blobs uh you wouldn't get you know where the where the the particles are showing up and that they're turning around in space and you know reflecting off each other obviously um yeah you just get clicks and photo detector intensities and so on yeah okay so you're saying they actually could infer the photon trajectories as opposed to not in quantum yeah 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 i see yeah. okay thank you thank you Rob.